five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. This is about space. America's return to space with news and information on our U.S. space program is your host of About Space, David Denault. Welcome and thanks for joining me today. I want to bring to your attention that one of the areas that has not been addressed openly and publicly on UAPs or commonly known as UFO phenomena is that these craft can travel supersonically underwater. More next as America and the world is listening to About Space Today. Come to the land of orange groves and palm trees. Come to the land of theme parks. Come to the land of sunny beaches and the azure waters of the Atlantic Ocean. So come and visit Florida for lasting memories. Email us. Email david.ddcruiseandtours at gmail.com or call DD Cruise and Tours at 877 747 8631 for your next family, cruise, or theme park vacation. Let us provide you your next visit with our travel experience, not experimentation. We are members of IATAN and CLIA. Email david.ddcruiseandtours at gmail.com. Serving the Southeast, traveler since 1985. Welcome back. Well, we know very little about our oceans and that there is maybe much more going on beneath the surface than we realize. The former director of a once secret unidentified aerial phenomena task force, Lou Alessandro, says these objects seem to have an interest in our waters. Two congruencies that we see. We see a we see an interest in our nuclear capabilities, and then we have this really bizarre, I don't know if you'd call it an interest, but there seems to be a connection with water. And these things have a uh, have a, a tendency to be seen in and around water, which which kind of leads to one of the observables uh, that we've had. There's five distinct observables that set this technology, as I mentioned earlier, aside from everything we have in our inventory. The first is hypersonic velocity, the ability to change directions instantly. Um, and, and when I say instantly, I mean human beings can withstand about nine G forces. Uh, our, some of our best aircraft can withstand about 16 Gs. These things are doing three, four, 600 Gs uh, in mid-flight. Uh, then there's hypersonic velocity. Uh, that is speeds that by definition are Mach 5 or above. Very, very fast. We do have some technology. You mentioned Russian hypersonics and things like that. You know, there, there are technologies that can go that fast. But then again, you don't expect a, a hypersonic aircraft to do a 90 degree turn. Uh, to put that into context, our SR-71 Blackbird, when at 3,200 miles an hour, wants to take a right-hand turn, it takes roughly half the state of Ohio to do it. Uh, and that's precisely what we're seeing. And then the third observable is a bit like cloaking. We call it low observability. But the fourth observable is what, what we were talking about, and that's transmedium travel and water. The ability for, for an object to fly not only in our atmosphere, low and high altitudes, but also potentially in a vacuum environment like space and even underwater. Now, we do have vehicles that can do that. We have, a, for example, an, a, a seaplane. A seaplane is, is a plane that can fly and it can float on the water. But when you look at it, it's neither really a very good aircraft or a boat because it's a design compromise. And yet what we are seeing are objects that can operate in all these domains or all these environments seemingly without any type of performance compromise. And so why are we seeing these things around in and around water is something that we're really we're really kind of scratching our heads with because we've seen these things they've been recorded not only in our atmosphere but there is data to suggest that they have also been tracked by some of our our capabilities underwater as well and being able to perform in ways that frankly exceed anything that we know we are on, on the planet right now. And it appears our Navy encountered an unidentified submerged object, or a USO, a former clandestine intelligence officer, Bob McGuire, who was based on the Navy's USS Hampton, a Los Angeles class fast tack a submarine, reveals an encounter with a USO. My interest began in 1998 or 9. I'm going to forget which, but I'll tell you the story. 
Okay. Uh, I was a rider, what's called a rider. That means I was on a submarine, but I was not a member of the crew. I was an intelligence officer and I was doing intelligence operations on board the USS Hampton. Now, I'm not going to tell you what those operations were because it's classified. I'm just going to state that I was on board. And there was a time when we needed to, let's just say, leave the area quickly where we were. So we left the area quickly. We went out in the middle of nowhere and we were running uh, deep and fast. And deep and fast are both classified numbers. So I won't be saying that. So we, shortly after this, we went under and we stayed under for a while until we had to leave where we were quickly. So while we left, we were underway and uh, it was between uh, my shifts. And all of a sudden I heard something really strange. And there's depth gauges on the walls, a lot of places inside a submarine. So I knew how deep we were. We were underway. And all of a sudden I hear this sound. It's really strange because it's clear that what is going on is something is whizzing by us and it's moving so fast. I just can't believe it because this submarine is limited in the speed it can go by the incompressibility of the water in front of it. And this thing blew by us like we were standing still. Now, I'm not going to throw anybody else under the bus here, but I, I guarantee you the following happened. A person with knowledge of onboard systems came out and said, oh, my God, thing is going faster than the speed of sound underwater. But that's faster than the speed of sound in air. Nothing can move faster than the speed of sound in air underwater because water is incompressible. There was no cavitation. It was just weird. And so there you go. That's my story about, uh, about the USOs. And Florida is said to be second in the UFO sightings after California. Some of Florida's sightings have been over our military bases at Pensacola Naval Air Station and Eglin Air Force Base. Other reports come from Florida's west coast of Fort Myers and Clearwater St. Pete areas, with craft seen coming out of and going into the water. Next is a person who grew up along Florida's west coast, and for privacy reasons, we'll just use his first name, Michael. Welcome, Michael. Hey, David. Thanks for having me. You know, you've had several visual encounters with these UAPs, or commonly known as UFOs. Was the experience that I had told you about, which was the craziest experience I've ever had in my life. Walking at this time, we were walking up the beach, and we're heading north on Siesta Key in Sarasota. And I'm on the lower ground and my friend's on the higher ground and we're heading north. So we're on the west side of Florida. So the ocean's to the left of me that I notice in my peripheral vision in the sky that there was an object in the sky. And this could have been, you know, four or 500 meters diagonally to my left over the water. And the minute, the second that I brought my conscious my focus my attention to it i noticed that it was so black that you could see it clearly in the sky once your eyes are brought to it the the, the darkness of this object is so black that any light that would hit it because the moon was out any light that would hit it it would almost like the light would just disappear you wouldn't be able to see any sort of glare or reflection or anything like that. Any light that would hit it, it would eat it. And just, and as soon as I bring my focus to it, a spotlight covers me and my friend. And this spotlight is about 50 foot diameter across the, it's covering the sand and 50 foot around us. And instantly the first, like, so as soon as that light hits us, the step that I took the position where my arms were, the position where my eyes were, my head, everything, I froze. And my friend froze as well, like a deer in the headlights. Um, or I don't know if this thing froze us. I don't really understand it. Um, but when it covered us, my, my first thought in my head was, you know, I'm thinking this is a police helicopter with a spotlight on it because this is what my 
brain is making sense of this experience. Was there any sound? No sound. No sound from the ocean. I couldn't hear the waves that were right next to me before. No wind. Nothing. Dead. Completely silent. I was just staring into this light. Like they were, look, whatever was looking at us and I was looking at it and I was just staring at it. Then I thought all these things running through my brain, like I knew this was real. I knew there was more to life than what we know. This is incredible, but I'm also scared. I don't, I didn't think about killed or taken or anything like that, but I just thought you feel everything. You feel happy. You feel excited. You feel fear. You feel scared. You feel a lot of things. It's unexplainable. The light covered me and my friend for probably about eight seconds. The light like slowly comes up to the air, whatever it was, UFO, UAP, and it slowly goes back into this craft. And then all of a sudden, this craft just makes an arc towards the ocean in the other direction from where we were. With the light, as the light is retracting, the aircraft is, or the thing is going away. The only thing that I can explain is it goes into a wormhole. Like, literally, the stars in the sky were like a blanket. And it closed around where this thing just went into the sky. It disappeared. It went to another dimension. It didn't shoot off, and I didn't see where it went. It wasn't like that. It went into a hole and went somewhere else. The truth is out there. And these USOs, underwater submerged objects that can travel in all environments, in space, in our skies, and underwater at Mach 5 speeds, appear to be something from out of this world. We are not alone. About Space Today has presented the information for you to decide and further investigate for yourselves. So do you believe, or do you want to believe? Check out our Facebook page, About Space Today, for launches and landings, and invite your family and friends to listen weekly. And join Dawn Meyer, Space Coast News Editor, this Friday for America in Space. And to all our listeners around the globe and here in the U.S., thanks for joining me today. I'm David Denault, and this has been About Space Today.